Good morning, year three. Happy Friday. Our last day of learning for this week. And then you've got to the weekend to do whatever you want. So well done for getting to your last day. You've all done really well this week. So for today's learning, Friday the 29th of January, Miss Morgan has included a list of what you will need for today's learning to save you running around your house and getting all of your things ready for your lesson. Okay, so the first thing that you will need is your CPG book. And you will need to look for page number 28 and it's called Nepal Earthquake Appeal. Okay, so find that page now. You can hit pause on the video and lay it out in front of you ready for your learning because we will need this for our task today. Okay, you will also need your purple book or some lined paper. You will need a pen or a pencil, your ruler for your lovely neat lines and if not you know you can use your clean white board for the straight line and today you'll need some colouring pens or pencils and I've got my fancy felt tip pens. Okay, if you don't have colouring pencils or pens, that's fine. Don't worry about it too much. Okay, so today's learning question, let's read together. It says, can I identify the features of a newspaper article? So I know what features are and I've got a picture of a face up because we all have certain features that make our face special. So, Miss Morgan has brown eyes, she has curly hair, and a pointy nose and chin. Okay, so they're my special features. What are your special features? Have a think what your special features are. Okay, and then we've got a newspaper article. Where can you find a newspaper article? There's a big, big clue in the name. Okay, you find them in a newspaper, don't you? Or if we're using technology, because we use technology nowadays, don't we? If we have an iPad, we can also read an article online on an online newspaper. And in fact, our text today is an online article that's been printed in our books. So before we go any further, what I need you to do, so listen very carefully, is to read today's text, okay? So I will read the top part for you. In April 2015, an earthquake hit Nepal, a country in South Asia. The charity Save the Children set up the Nepal Appeal to raise money to help people affected by the earthquake. This article from their website describes how donations have made a huge difference to the area. Okay, so read the newspaper article now. And have a look at the features of the newspaper article. What's so special about this newspaper article whilst you do that at the same time? So hit pause on the video now and do that for me. Okay, I hope you've read that article to help you with today's learning of identifying the features of a newspaper article. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the features together. And I'm going to ask you to now get on your feet because we are going to be doing a bit of our acting today to help us to remember the features. Okay, so number one, what's the, what stands out the most to you in a newspaper article? Well, I think the headline, the headline. And what's so important about a headline? Now a headline, let's, let's look at the letters. What's so different about that text to the other parts of the writing? Hit pause on the video and see if you can find out. I hope you found it out. It's in fact all written in capital letters, our uppercase letters, our big ones. Okay, so that helps your headline to stand out. It catches the reader's eyes. Okay. The next thing we've got is an introductory paragraph and I'm doing this because this paragraph is introducing the article. Now, the important thing about an introductory paragraph are five things and they all start with a W, a W. Okay, so get your hand with me and they are the what, the when, 
the where, the who and the why. So think in your head now, why do people write newspaper articles? Because we want to find out about events. So the introductory paragraph tells us who's affected. So in our case today, in our newspaper article, the people of Nepal, where it happened, Nepal, um, what date it happened, when it happened, April 2015, our introductory paragraph tells us all of the five key pieces of information. Okay, so we've covered our headline and our introductory paragraph. So take a look at your text now in your book. We have done subheadings before in our wanted posters. So we've got the headline, the introductory paragraph, and now we have our subheadings. Okay. What's so special about our subheadings? You should know that they are titles that introduce a paragraph of writing. Okay. Well, if I'm looking at it, they're quite bold. What do you think? Do you think they're written quite bold? Do they stand out and help us with finding the key information? Yes, because this subheading says how your donation has helped children. So I know straight away that the paragraph that's underneath that is going to tell me about how my donation has helped children. Okay, so that's what your subheading does. The next one, not all newspaper articles have these. They are bullet points. So bullet points. What do you think a bullet point does, a bullet point? Pause the video and have a look at those special dots on the newspaper article and think, how does that help me to read the newspaper article? So hit pause now. Okay, well, I know by looking at the bullet points, they help me they're almost like listing how my money has helped, has helped the children of Nepal. So it's almost giving me a list and it really helps me to read the article and it makes it much easier for me to do because it has bullet points. Okay, what else have we got? We've got two more things to go. We have a picture. Why do you think newspaper articles might have a picture? Let's take a look. Oh, Miss Morgan hasn't included it on there. So that's up to you to have a think about now. So hit pause. Why do you think there's a picture on a newspaper article? Okay, well, I think there is a picture on a newspaper article because it shows me what the article is about. Okay, I know that it's about the Nepal earthquake, but I want to see what is happening. Okay, and then the final one, oh, quote. Quotes, okay, quotes. What am I doing here? Quotes, I am speaking, okay. So quotes are when we ask somebody who's been affected by the event, so in this case, the Nepal earthquake, what they think about it, so that we get their point of view, because they were there, weren't they? This lady in our story, who was there okay so she's recalling what happened well done year three we had to cover those features really quickly so now what i want you to do is to get your purple books ready for your task and your listening ears so you know what you are doing Okie dokie, year three, who is ready for today's learning task? So get your ears ready because I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. Okay, so today we're going to make a poster about the features of a newspaper article. You're going to do that in your purple book. So make sure you've got your purple book and your felt tip pens or colouring pencils ready. And I'm not going to ask you to write today's date or title because we want to make the poster as colourful and as bright as possible. So what I've done is I've, I have put a title on there, Features of a Newspaper Article, almost a little bit like a headline in a newspaper article. So 
The first feature that I remember now is the head line. So I am going to write my first feature on my poster head line. And I'm writing that anywhere I want because it's my poster and I can. Head line. And I might even get my ruler and underline that to make it stand out. Because don't headlines stand out in a newspaper article? Now, what's so special about today is that it makes it stand out. It's got capital letters. So, underneath that, I'm going to get a pen. And I'm going to write capital letters, still in my neatest handwriting, capital letters, um, to catch the reader's eye. Headlines catch the reader's eye. It makes them want to read more. Catch the reader's eye. So on my poster, I'm not just writing headline, I know that's a feature, but I'm saying what a headline does or what features are included in that headline, such as capital letters. Can you remember any other features from our poster? What's this one? Sub, subheadings. So get your spelling right as well. Sound it out as you write it. Sub headings. Can you remember any more year three? I hope you're shouting a lot at the video now. Got sub headings. Oh, I'm introducing something. What am I introducing? An introductory paragraph. And that's the paragraph from the beginning. Why do we put it at the start of a newspaper article? It introduces what it's about. And it's got five things in there. The who, the what, the when, the where and the why. And I can write that underneath. Okie doke. So, I'm looking forward to seeing your posters. I want them to be as bright as possible if you can make them really bright. And I want to see lots of reasons why those features are included in a newspaper article. If you get a little bit stuck and you can't remember what is on our poster, uh, sorry, what is um, in a newspaper article, what features, then rewind this video and go back to when we were learning about it to help you out. Okay, so looking forward to seeing those and then we are going to move on to our CPG book to answer some questions about our text after you have completed this. See you in a second. Welcome back year three. I hope you had fun doing your features posters. So what we are going to do now <clears throat> Excuse me. We are going to answer our questions in our CPG book. So if you've forgotten, we are on page 28 today, but you should have this page open as it should have helped you with your poster. And today we are only going to answer one, two, three, four questions. So not all seven, just four. And I know that you have already read this to help you with your features poster, but I'm going to go through some of the vocabulary with you, some of the tricky words, so that you understand the article a little bit more. Okay, so our first word is catastrophic, and that's got a little star to take us to our glossary at the bottom. And catastrophic is a really fancy adjective to just say terrible. The earthquake was terrible. Okay, we've also got aftershocks, which is in our glossary. Smaller earthquakes following the main earthquake. So they had the big earthquake that shattered Nepal, but then they had some small ones after too. Vital aid. Now, vital means very important. What does vital mean? Very important. And aid are things that help you. So, if you got hurt during the earthquake, you may have needed some plasters for your cuts or some food because it may have ruined your food. So, those are really important things that we need to help. Vital aid. Um, distribute. That just means to give out. We've got clinics, so they are 
um, a little bit like the doctors, okay? So when you go to the doctors, that is a clinic, okay? Remote villages, they are villages that are in the middle of nowhere, okay? So I'm sure that where Santa lives in the North Pole, he may live somewhere that's quite remote. Not many people live around him because he would, would want to keep it a secret, wouldn't he? And we have water purification drops. Now that's very fancy. Water purification drops are what make water nice and clean so that we can drink it. We've got overwhelming. Sometimes when I look at the text we have to read, I feel overwhelmed, okay? I feel like, oh, there's quite a lot to do. I'm starting to feel a bit worried about it, okay? That's what overwhelming means. And then our last one is fulfilling. That means that you feel very happy about something. You feel very content. Okay, so if you want to do really well in your answers now, what I would do is I would read my text quickly again so that you can find some really good answers. Okay, so pause the video now and read the text again. Okay, I am asking you to do a lot today, year three. I'm ever so sorry, but you've got the weekend to have a good rest after, haven't you? Okay, so question number one. Why do you think the earthquake survivors were given tarpaulins? Now, I've highlighted this word because this is a retrieval question. I want to retrieve or take that from our text, that word tarpaulins. So I would look for the word tarpaulins to help me to find out what they actually are first. Now I found tarpaulins in the text. Distribute shelter materials and essential household items to over 172,000 families, including tarpaulins. And it says what it is in our glossary. They are big pieces of waterproof material. So waterproof means that water cannot get through them. Why do you think earthquake survivors would need really big tarpaulin? Why would they need really big pieces of waterproof material? I'm giving you a big clue here. Okay, question number two. How many hygiene kits were distributed? <clears throat> now we said that distributed <coughs> excuse me, means that they are given out. So, hygiene kits, I would look for that word, that is a retrieval again. So look for the words hygiene kit in your text and see how many were distributed. If it's asking how many, my answer is probably going to be a number. What do you think? Number three, give two ways that donations have helped to keep children in Nepal healthy. So we know that we are healthy, or you as children are healthy, when you have food, when you have water, when you have somewhere to live. So we need two ways how the donations have helped. Now my subheading here says, how your donations has helped children. So if my subheading says that, do you think the information would be in the paragraphs below? I think it would be. And our last question for today, you're doing really well year three. What does the word vital, line 14, mean? Circle one. And I have written dictionary because you can look at your dictionary online, just like I showed you the other day, or you can look at your dictionary book at home for the word vital to give you a clue but if not then when i was reading the text the vocabulary i was saying that to aid is vital okay so think is it modern clean essential or main okay today's learning has been quite difficult year three but i imagine um, that you have done really well okay so have a lovely day and a lovely weekend and I will see you on Monday for Monday's learning. Bye.